Hi and Happy New Year. It is 2019 and welcome to Deep in a Bunker. Today I am sending this video blog from the bunker. That's right, my bunker. Uh, finally under construction after a long, long uh, design uh, process. So we're at the stage now where the walls have been lined. Uh, electricity is semi in. Uh, will be finished in the next couple of weeks and plumbing also and these are all considerations I had for my bunker when designing it when uh, going through construction what did I need in my bunker what was essential for me and my family to survive if SHTF happens well a few things I considered decontamination and sanitation decontamination and sanitation uh, are quite simple so uh, I've installed a shower, gravity fed shower, gravity fed from its own water supply, 100 gallons uh, just located on the store above, so to give it enough fall so the water could flow free without the use of a pump, uh, just in case uh, I didn't have electricity for whatever reason. However, electricity is taken care of in the form of a generator, a uh, small diesel generator, but it does uh, in emergencies only get eight hours of power. Um, and the rest of the time, well, it's going to be candles and backup systems and LED lights uh, left, right and centre. So that's talking about shower. Then we have to move on to sanitation of the toilets. Um, going toilet. Installing a chemical toilet is quite easy. Um, you know, it's waste uh, that it's produced that you have to take care of. Once again, this is only for emergency purposes and um, I'm happy that I could uh, poop for a week. Okay, then it's moving on to things like... Um, personal hygiene, everyday personal hygiene, uh, washing your hands uh, once again, um, water from that independent water supply, uh, that is enough. Uh, that is uh, attached to the mains, so it can be topped up when it goes down. However, if the main is contaminated, um, the edema through water tests, I can turn it off uh, from that supply and just rely on that 100 gallons uh, for a few days uh, that I need it. Um, yeah. And then it moved on to things like um, being able to eat. So, uh, catering area, kitchen area. Yeah, quite simple. Uh, go down any hardware store, pick yourself up a uh, small um, kitchen units uh, with that. Then you've got uh, electric hob and you're good to go. You can cook a little something out. Uh, sleeping arrangements are very, very cramped. It's a couple of bunk beds uh, just stashed in the corner. Um, but it does. I've got uh, TV, uh, laptop, all the things to keep me entertained. Um, yeah, so for a very short time period, uh, the bunker is uh, good to go, good for a survival situation. Um, and that's where we are at the moment. I'm hoping to expand it out and make it more extensive as you grow, but time, is, time and space are a limiting factor. Uh, also money. So this hasn't been cheap. Uh, this has been <laughs> quite a few thousand in the making and um, I've done a lot of work myself and we're not a uh, tradesman that I've brought in. So there we go. Now, storage of food has been also a big problem uh, along with uh, sleeping area and they've had to double up. So under the bunk beds I've got a lot of food stored, ready to go. And it got me to thinking, what's best for me dry versus uh tin food so dry i'll show you here um so things like mashed potato you got your mashed potato flakes that's all very well and good um but if the power runs out i've got no electricity uh, at present i've got no way to uh you know cook it and i don't really fancy eating dry potato flakes raw so i've got obviously tins of potatoes new potatoes uh, ready to go, they can be, you know, they are cooked, so they're good to go. Um, and I'm very happy with that, but that also brings us on to the second point. Well, you know, I want a cup of coffee in the morning. So, uh, you know, evaporated milk, absolutely fantastic stuff. Condensed milk, 10 times better. Um, yeah, there we are. It's great stuff, but once again, the main limiting factor of this, it's got a year shelf life. This in fact ran out in uh, July 2018 and I opened a tin the other day. It's absolutely fine, no lumps in it. Um, I'm not dead, no ill effects. But you know, for me in the long term, it's going to be milk powder. Um, yeah, you don't need many of these. What's this, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half kilograms? Um, you know, 
four of these and I'm, I'm good for a few weeks it's not a problem maybe a month I don't know uh, it depends you know am I with myself by myself or am I with my family uh, definitely powdered for the long term but it does depend on water you know catchment systems of water etc also uh, there's things you really need to consider uh, being able to cook you haven't got power and I am going to uh, go over this point a few more times so do bear with me um, quite simply things like uh, tin goods you're going to eat day to day, lentils, um, you know, this is uh, tin lentils, green lentils ready to go, it's um, no cooking required, however, um, long term once again you'll need something, you know, you can cook with, with the ability to cook, comes with it, I mean, 10 other lentils, uh, I don't actually like red lentils that much, but the bargain was there so I bought it and I am all about saving money, um, you know, and making the most of resources available and I hope you, you know follow that ethos that I have here you know you're not always going to have the ability to cook so have the backup system have the tins in place but I would primarily like to um, cook as fresh as possible I'd like to boil my lentils I'd like to um, you know eat hot food but if not cold is always available it's going to keep me sustained and worst comes to the worst it's going to be protein powder time you know, um, yeah, whatever uh, flavor you want, you know, your cookies and cream, your strawberries, um, etc. It's there. It requires water. Uh, water storage, once again, another uh, big problem. So fresh water storage, it's been lots and lots of bottles stored down here, ready to go. And this got two years shelf life on it. It'll probably go for a lot more because uh, it's sealed, sealed in the factory in a protect, um, protective environment. So it's all good, yeah. So, Deep in the bunker is taking off, it's taking shape, and we're getting things in place. Now, why would I do this? Why would I have a bunker? Why would I go to the expense of um, decking out my old coal cellar, which is, uh, believe me, not much more than uh, you know two sort of small rooms. Yeah, you know, they can, like I say, the the bunk beds go wall to wall. Yeah, the kitchen's on the other side there. Uh, and I will show this in uh, upcoming videos, and you'll see uh, the decontam area that I'm actually currently in. Uh, what will be the decontam area is the largest room, and it's uh, measuring a poultry um, uh, three meters by uh, one point nine. So there we go. Um, room behind me, uh, slightly even less. So I'm getting three meters long, uh, one point uh, six. And then moving on to the last room, the living quarters. Um, we're talking uh, 1.9, 1.6 combined. What's that? 3.5 by by two. Uh, pro yeah, approximately two, two meters. So it's a very small space. It's a compact space, but it is mine. Um, you know, it's got singular access. Uh, not the best on the safety aspects, but it is the best for just uh, getting down and uh, you know hunkering in so if anything should happen hopefully uh, my bunker will not be discovered me and my family will be safe and we can ride out a short-term storm so hopefully that will happen and um, it's been wonderful to speak to you again in the new year um, please do subscribe do stay tuned and um, above all stay sane this has been deep in the bunker happy new year